accepted. So we've been having some pretty spirited discussions around the office, particularly in the studio last night about this. So we invited New Day anchor Chris Cuomo to join us for a no holes barred conversation. Oh, I'm getting it on the street from people saying, you know, that was a perfect question when I said, when you asked her, aren't you just happy to have a healthy child? What's wrong with black sperm? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's wrong with black sperm, Don. This is America, don't you know that? Listen, I don't like anything about this story. Everything, every aspect of it uh, is different shades of uncomfortable, no pun intended. Does she have a lawsuit, uh, she and her partner? Yeah. Yes, they do. Um, they have a viable lawsuit. Why? Because there was, a, there was a contract involved. They wanted certain things. They didn't get those things. But what this story really about is, is there something wrong here. There's certainly something that was incorrect. We, but I think everybody wrong? agrees she has a lawsuit, but is it worth pursuing? I mean, doesn't being a good parent, having a healthy kid, and whatever, whatever kids you get, doesn't that See, really kind of trump everything? Because the feeling is that she will be sending the wrong message to, to her, her daughter. Child, yeah. So when her child, 10 years from now, Googles her name and finds out that there was a lawsuit, that the message will be, you were imperfect, or we didn't want you. I like that they live in a town where being biracial might be the problem, but being a kid of a gay couple uh, isn't a problem. <laughs> okay, we had a very heated, controversial conversation here this week. So here's our, how the conversation started. We were talking about Bill Maher's show, and Bill Maher made comments about the Muslim world. Yeah, he, he talked about Islam and, he, and, and about whether or not it was more violent. What, should we just listen to him? Let, and then let we'll listen. Do if vast numbers of Muslims across the world believe, and they do, that humans deserve to die, for merely holding a different idea, or drawing a cartoon, or writing a book, or eloping with the wrong person. Not only does the Muslim world have something in common with ISIS, it has too much in common with ISIS. Okay, so then we posed those issues to Reza Aslan, who is a Middle East scholar, and asked whether there's something about Muslim countries' form of justice and human rights that is somehow more primitive than other it countries. It got heated. It did. It got primitive. Did you hear what you just said? You said in Muslim countries. Mm. I just told you that in Indonesia, women are absolutely 100% equal to men. Mm. In Turkey, they have had more female representatives, more female heads of state in Turkey than we have in the United yes, States. In Pakistan, Stop women saying are, things like in Pakistan, Muslim countries. Women are still being stoned. And that's a problem for Pakistan. You're right. So let's criticize Pakistan. He was, uh, in a way, you know, playing off the last story we did, he was playing a little bit of the race religion card on right. you guys. He was saying, you're calling everybody the same. You're calling them all bad, and no. you shouldn't do that. That's yeah, what he was saying. And, and by the way, that was a great true. point. But I, I thought that's that when, I, that's I think that when the point... Believe in Judaism or Christianity? No, not if you examine the text. Most experts will tell you exactly that. How it's applied culturally, you now get into a big problem that is a in great that part answer. of the world. Yeah. But, uh, but I also think that, you know, Reza, he apologized on Twitter. Well, he too. apologized because during the course of it, he said that the question was stupid, and it implied that I was stupid. And he immediately apologized. And I don't actually need an apology. I think that we need to be able to ask the questions, even controversial questions, even questions that you might deem as stupid, because then it allows for the conversation. There are no and you have to be able to have the Most Americans think Muslims are inherently violent. They think it's a, a a faith that encourages jihad, which they take Most as war Americans against other faiths. That. And, that, and they happen the to be wrong. Saying. But that's I also want to say that it was interesting that Reza used the uh, example of Indonesia, where he was saying they, have, they, they treat women you know, fairly, uh, because it was just last weekend that one province in Indonesia, Aceh, Allowed legally caning right. of homosexuals. Yeah, right. So I don't Women know that that's the paragon of human rights. I think that's rights. pretty clear. I think, I think the re listen. I think he realized the moment you call someone a name, you lose the argument, yes. and that's why that's why he apologized yes. to. Uh, uh, so, but also his tone was very angry. So he yeah. he wound up kind of demonstrating uh, what people are fearful about when they when they think of the faith in the first place, which is the hostility of it. Look, here's what you guys are exposing yourselves to. This is the state of play in journalism today. The Muslim world is responsible for a really big part of religious extremism right, right now. And they are unusually violent, they are unusually barbaric in the places where it's happening. Right. And it's happening there more than it is in other places. Do you therefore want to generalize? Of course not. But you do want to call a situation what it is. It's not a coincidence that ISIS begins with an I. Right. I mean, that's what's going on in that part of the world. Doesn't mean that other faiths can't be violent and other cultures can't be violent, but you shouldn't be afraid of the question. Thank you, Six sir. 6 to 9 a.m. tomorrow to morning. Appreciate Great it. To see you. You were heated up, Kamarunis.